So hello and welcome back to Go Again Gaming. My name is Az and today this is the first episode of Tabletop Hype, um, a series that's all about board games, whether that's exploring Kickstarter campaigns, doing some playthroughs, unboxings and products. This is where you'll find your board game fix um, on Go Again Gaming. So today I just wanted to speak about a, um, a campaign that has only got three days left um, and it's through GameFound, it's not through Kickstarter, it's through GameFound. GameFound normally are the platform that um, your pledge goes to after you've pledged on Kickstarter, especially for games that I've backed like Resident Evil, um, Nemesis, but GameFound is also a, a crowdfunding platform in itself and this game is on GameFound at the moment and it looks just absolutely awesome like the miniatures in this game are ridiculously good like simon style miniatures if not more detailed than simon and that is saying something uh simon call me or not if you're uh, if you're familiar with board games um but yeah this is lavon rising wild ascent i think this is a reprint but uh let's go over to the webpage share now so I think this is a reprint or a sort of re or sort of reskin or something along the line. I don't know the history of this game, but all I know is that it is looking awesome. Um and uh yeah, I mean just look at that. Look at look at what you can see there. Just looks absolutely fantastic. Um so let's scroll down. As you can see here, you've got um the goal was fifty grand dollars and it's raised eight hundred and twenty two thousand instead. So it's a 1,645% funded, which is absolutely ridiculous. Um, so there must be some hype around this game and some backstories and history behind this game or this uh, or this publisher, um, Lazy Squire Games. If I click that, where does that take me? Does that take me to uh, anything else that they've done? No, it's just the Lavon Rising, by the looks of it. Uh, and they're from um, Van is VA, is that Vancouver? I'm not sure. Um, so yeah, it's a monster hunting game. Um, and uh, we did actually get the Monster Hunter the Monster Hunter game recently that was actually based on the Monster Hunter Japanese Capcom game. Um, and uh, I, I was going to back that, but I just didn't feel like you got enough for the money that you were spending. And that is just a typical Steamforged game. But we won't go into that now. But this game does look like a Monster Hunter-esque type sort of game. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see what the reviews are like and how this differs to other sort of Monster Hunting games. Um, so yeah, let's go back onto the webpage here. So it's a game to one to four players. And the playtime is 75 minutes for ages 14 and above. And it's a fantasy survival RPG adventure uh, style game. And you can play it solo if you do want to play it solo. Uh, and it's, look at this. Look at this miniature. It looks ridiculous. Look at the detail on it. The Wildswood Elk. Free for all campaign pledges. So if you pledge, you do get the Wildswood Elk, which doesn't come in the core game. Um, so that's a nice little bonus. Um, so that's cool. And as you can see here at the bottom of this particular creature, my mouse isn't showing on the screen for some reason. But as you can see, you got the Wildwood Elk on the left there. You got the uh, the character card. You got a couple of tokens that, he, that obviously spawns, and then you got um, some some other items here, here at the bottom there that you probably get after you defeat him. Um, so which is quite cool. So you, once you kill a monster, you probably get some sort of um, identifying armor piece or item from that particular enemy that you've killed, which I imagine will sort of translate into a campaign style game, which means that you'll probably build up to like a big boss fight after going out and hunting these lesser creatures. Well, you say lesser. Look at the size of its antlers. Massive. It's got a bird that just is just chilling on the on the on the edge of his antler there. Um, so yeah, it looks really really cool. Um, and that's just one miniature, you know. Um, so, uh, Wild Ascent Lavon Rising is a reprint campaign. There we go, for Wild Ascent, the questionably named and overly ambitious board game from Lazy Squire Games. And we've learnt a lot since we first started making the game in terms of design as well as manufacturing and fulfilment. So, we're taking that hard earned knowledge and putting it back into Wild Ascent to make a great game even better. So, yeah, it is a reprint. So,. I don't know what happened with the with the with the with the original campaign, 
Uh, but it seems like they've learned from their mistakes. They've sort of got experience from the sort of crowdfunding platform and are now putting it into this campaign, which is, you know, it, it has smashed its target. People are definitely interested. So there must have been a good premise in the earlier Kickstarter in order to sort of achieve what has been achieved in this campaign. Um, so that is very, very promising. Um, so we've got Alex Radcliffe uh, from Board Game Co. saying, uh, Laman Rising did what no other game has ever made me do. I actually read branching story paths just to find out what happened. This game layers an amazing and branching story on top of a game system I already love with additional mechanical tweaks that further enhance the replayability. Five plus out of five. So a raving review there from Board Game Co., which I believe is a YouTube uh, channel. Um... So yeah, they've obviously made some changes and they've also added story elements and branching story elements to the game as well. So, you know, if you're playing the game over and over again just to see what other paths it takes you down, that is a fantastic, um, fantastic thing to have in your game. So yeah, I think this is the, the, main, the main sort of uh, go-to pledge. You've got the Wild Ascent, Lavon Rising and the Wild Ascent uh, expansion here. But look at look at all those miniatures that you get there. That is ridiculous, isn't it? Look at the scale of the game. Look at the detail. Look at how much stuff you can get. Uh, and the board looks stunning as well. Um, so, yeah, it just looks fantastic. You've got, obviously, the board. You've got a time track around the board for keeping track of something there. And you've got, like, a campsite tile uh, to, the, um, to the front of there as well. Um, which is, obviously, maybe you go there to recruit... Um, heroes to come with you or sort of followers to come with you to achieve different effects and benefits before you go out on a hunt um, so yeah I do love that I do love that there's like a in between sort of section so you go out for a hunt but then you come back to like the camp area you sort of um, tinker with the items and the equipments that you may have got or the materials that you gathered while you're out there's now new heroes that you can recruit to come with you on your next battle your next hunt I do like that sort of in between um, in between fighting the monster and then recovering and doing the whole sort of town square sort of phase I do like that in games like this just gives you a little bit of a rest a little bit of time to sort of re recoup and re-strategize for what you want to achieve next which is great and it gives you that feeling that you are going back, you are sort of gearing up, and then you're going back out again. So, yeah, I do love that that aspect of games like this. Uh, very sort of Kingdom Death Monster style um, sort of phases. So, yeah, that just looks awesome. Uh, and uh, it says here, the relationships we've cultivated over the last uh, the past few years have allowed us to do things we couldn't during the first campaign, like offer full printed games in multiple languages. And what's more, since the core game and Shadow of the Silverstrom uh, expansion are already designed, we'll be sending them out earlier than Lavon Rising, so you won't need to wait as long to battle in the arena or hunt in the wilds, which is good. Uh, so you've got English, German, French, Spanish, Italian as the main languages, but I think there are there might be some more as well. Um, so we've got here, um, why join the hunt now? Your feedback will impact the game's design. You unlock the stretch goals, which is cool. Uh, you get much more than you would at retail, which is very, very true. That is normally the case with Kickstarter campaigns, and it's the only way to get some free stuff like all of the stretch goals. So again, with Kickstarter campaigns and game found and crowdfunding, you are awarded for uh, pledging to these campaigns. Um, early on which is always good and you get stuff that other people wouldn't get so you get the FOMO fear of missing out marketing strategy which plagues upon your head as well and as you can see I've got a Wild Ascent core pledge um, in here I haven't actually pledged this game yet but I'm very tempted to do so because so it looks awesome so you've got a couple of rewards here you've got the Lavon Rising pledge which just is just an absolute haul isn't it look how many stuff how much stuff you get there ridiculous amounts of stuff uh, you've got the wild ascent core pledge which is the one that i've added to my pledge basket potentially for these ones uh you've got second hand be uh, backers pledge uh, you've got the shadow of the silver stream uh, you've got the second hand backers pledge shadow of the uh, silver stream and new pledge items so you've got loads of options as to what sort of um how all in you want to go really um so yeah you've got a load of options there as to what your budget is and what you can get but yeah, let's go into the different pledges now. So you should be able to see um, what they are in a moment. So let me just have a look, see if I can find this for you. So here we go. Pledge content summary. This is the first one. So this is the main one. 
you've got uh, two boxes. You've got the Wild Ascent core game plus all the applicable stretch goals plus the save game app. Um, so if you're playing a campaign, there'll be an app that comes with it where you can sort of save your game and stuff. That's quite interesting. So with this, you get 49 miniatures, 38 punch board cards, loads of cards, a double-sided game board, loads of dice, campaign book, and loads of, do loads of different tokens. And there's a sort of smattering of miniatures that you can come to expect in these two boxes there as well, which is quite cool. Uh, then you've got this one, um, which is the uh, Wild Ascent core game plus the Wild Ascent Shadow uh, the Silver Strem. So yeah, again, 115 miniatures in these boxes. So you're getting loads of miniatures here. These miniatures here, I think, are just unique to the boxes that are displayed. Um, so yeah, that's not all of the miniatures that you get. Uh, I'm pretty sure we'll be able to see those in a minute. Then you've got this one. Look at the size of these miniatures. If that's to scale, that is mad. Look at, this, look at the detail in that dragon. This looks so good. The mammoth as well. You've got a big spider thing there. Yeah, it just looks so good. The miniatures in this game look ridiculously good. Um, so yeah, that looks fantastic. Uh, and we've got a close-up here of... Um, oh, here we go. So this is the this is detailed box content. So we've got the Wild Ascent core game, which comes with 49 miniatures. Uh, so the core game alone comes with 49 miniatures, which is great. Those characters there are all playable characters, I believe. Um, so all of those characters in different poses. So that's cool. Yeah, so that they're they're called the seekers. So they're the heroes that you are in the game, which is great. And obviously you've got their their respective cards. So you've got a, a warlock, you've got guardian of the wilds, uh, wayward knight, priestess, like a snake lady, uh, elven monk. Uh, so yeah, look at all these characters. And this is just the core game. This is just the core box. Just looks mental. So much stuff going on, and the graphics as well, brilliant. And look at the miniatures. I mean, come on. Look at the detail in that. That is ridiculous. That's not that can't be that that can't be that one box, surely. No way can that be that one box. That is just ridiculous. Maybe it is. Yeah, you've got the Phoenix, you've got the Wildwood Sentinel, you've got the trench worm, you've got the unicorn, you've got the exalted effigy, you've got the demon wretch, you've got the fire toad. The Chimera, the River Guardian, the Stream Caller, the Wildswood Widow, Bile Beetle, Feathered Serpent, Griffin, Horned Golem. So that's all in one box. Are you having a you having a giraffe? That is ridiculous, isn't it? All those characters and all of those enemies. Yeah. Forty nine miniatures. That's ridiculous. That's what I mean. All of those miniatures. That is fantastic, isn't it? Let's be honest. That is that that is worth that is worth the price of admission for just the core box, isn't it? That is that's that, that's blew my mind because I mean the Monster Hunter game, the Monster Hunter game, which was obviously based on the Capcom IP, is just for the for the amount that you pledged to for what you got was absolutely rubbish. I mean, I don't want to draw comparisons, but there probably will be comparisons to be made. But still, the amount of money that you spend on on games like this, you should be getting this much content, which is just great. Um so yeah, that looks fantastic. You got all the cards and stuff, yeah, that's just brilliant. And then obviously we've got the um the extra box as well. So the core pledge comes with uh this box and the extra box here, the Wild Ascent, the green box, I think. Um, so you get the this one. Obviously, it, it tells you. It tells you in the bloody thing. So that's that's everything that comes in that blue box. All of those stuff. It's ridiculous. So much stuff. Then obviously this one is the green box. So you've got Lava Fiend, Plague Beast, Wild's Flower, Trench Watcher, some arena equipment, hunt equipment, uh, scout cards... Uh, so yeah, we got workers. So obviously you recruit workers in the um, camp, in the camp map to maybe take on you. Trader, beastmaster, yeah, that's that's quality. Silver strem cards, so probably like event style cards. Yeah, game boards, uh, various tokens and cards. Look at the detail. Um, and then we got this one, which is the shadow of the silver strem. So this comes with sixty-five miniatures, one extra large miniature. Uh, cards and more tokens. So look at what you get here. You get like pillars and stuff, like terrain and stuff. 
So you get all the seekers there, look. All the new seekers. Which is brilliant. You've got some terrain. Um, so yeah, look at all this. Ridiculously good. You got a couple of like uh, maybe these like NPC characters that you choose that you take with you because you got three of each, like three defenders, three pinners, three berserkers. So they're probably uh, you got this lady, Shadow of the Silver Dream, with her torments, uh, and she got some scenery. Um, and then you got more miniatures down here. Look at the size of that dragon! Oh my goodness me! Yeah, so you got more stuff here. I don't know what box this is part of. This can't be part of the same box, surely. It is. Yeah, well, well 65 miniatures, $120 for all of this. Look at the state of that. God, so many good stuff, so much good stuff. And this is why it's called Tabletop Hype, because it's just hype through the roof, isn't it? Three days I've got to back this. I need to, really. Need to. Look at the state of it. So much good miniatures. But this is the Shadow of the Silverstrom expansion, so, yeah. It just looks so beautiful, though, doesn't it? So, yeah, you've got uh, Bog Skulkers, Fire Lord, with Fire Serpents coming around it, uh, Wisp. The twin dragon. Look at the size of that. Speechless. Scenery. Uh, and then obviously you've got loads of various cards and tokens. Then we've got the Wild Ascent Lavon Rising. Um, so I think this is the core box. Um, it's hard to tell, isn't it? It's hard to tell what's what. Because there's so many different things. Pledge content summary. Let's have a look. No. it's that. So the, so the Lavon Rising is not... Uh, the actual thing. So this is the core game, Wild Ascent. And then we've got the detailed box content. So yeah, this is what comes in the core game. 49 miniatures. Sorry, it's just I'm all over the place. I'm just so hyped about it. It's quality. So you've got loads of miniatures there. Seekers. Uh, well, I've already done this. I've already done this one. I have done this one already. So yeah, I have done that one already. I'm just lost in the in the content that this game is, 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 is giving us. Um, God, look at that state of it. So much good stuff. Um, there you go. So Wild, Wild Ascent, Lavon Rising. So that's the 77 miniatures there. So you've got loads of good, loads of good stuff. New Seekers. More like... Uh, they got guns and sort of more like um, projectile weapons by the looks of it in this one. So it's more like iron forged uh, weapons and, um, and guns and stuff as well. So that's quite cool. Yeah, so you've got all the, all the characters there. Many goblins died to bring you this information. I guess a lot more are going to bite it because this content is incomplete. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, we could scroll through this all day. Look at the state of that dragon. I mean, just imagine if you played like sort of, you know, if you play sort of D and D. You know, a lot of people play Dungeons and Dragons, and they use miniatures to represent uh, different creatures and characters and what have you. It would just be worth just picking up the miniatures for this for, for this game from this game. Look at the state of it. We've got some big spider things as well, which I love. Mammoth. Look at the detail of that plastic. It's gonna be a painter's dream painting some of these. Look at these obelisks coming out of the ground and velociraptors and Aurelian dragons. Oh, come on. Give it a rest. Infernal dragon. Onks dragon. So in this Lavon Rising set, you get some dragons. You get some well good stuff. And again. Goodness me. All these cards, boards. Beautifully designed as well. More worker goblins going on a lunch break. And then we got some gameplay overview as well. Um, so, you know, it goes through. Um, and there will be, on YouTube as well, there will be sort of playthrough videos. So you will be able to go and see uh, playthrough videos of how to play this game. But on this on this site as well, it does give you like a little sort of prototype of what the board looks like. Seekers, obviously Seekers are the characters that you play. The workers are extra things that you take with you. You've got the locales as well. So obviously they will probably do 
different things depending on where you are in, on the board and having to deal with the terrain as well as the actual creatures. Creatures of the Wild, so you've got some of those there. The arena, so there's obviously like a PvP mode as well that you could potentially go into, um, which is quite cool. Um, but yeah, fantastic creatures. Story-driven campaigns. There's a campaign mode as well where you probably take take a load of heroes in. You gear up as you as you hunt smaller creatures to larger creatures, and you you aim to take down a massive creature at the end. You've got the mist, um, the mist strider here, which is an optional extra. Um, I think you you had to back it within the first 24 hours, something like that. I don't know, but this came with the if you backed it for a certain time. Um, but yeah, it's just. You can, you can click to read the book, the demo campaign, and you've got more videos on the internet as to uh, his board game co. Uh, so you can check them out if you want to if you want to look at the miniatures on the board though. They've even got the prototypes out there and they just look fantastic. Yeah. So yeah, lots of content to check out on this game. Uh, reviews, unboxings, uh, full resin miniatures. Um, you got Wild Ascent there um, with the Good Time Society. Seen a lot of videos with her. Man vs. Meeple was always a good uh, good content, trusted source. Uh, and then, yeah, we got loads of good stuff on here. So, I mean, unboxings in 4K, ultra high definition video, which is great. So, you got a Dice Tower as well, how to play Dice Tower. I think that's the old printing from Lazy Squire. So, that'll be, that'll be worth checking out if you're a board game fan. But, I mean, ultimately. It just looks like there's so much content. My screen isn't even it isn't even loading because the amount of content. Um, but yeah, uh, I don't want to go into too much um, too much hype because I've hyped up enough. I mean, if that if that isn't enough, um, if that isn't enough hype, then I don't know what will be. But yeah, that's the first episode. And uh, when this video is released, it'll probably have a couple of days left. So I just thought I'd do my best to hype it up. Uh, because it does look really, really good, and it, it just looks like a fantastic way to spend some time. Just, you know, gearing up your heroes, playing with some friends, hunting massive monsters, and uh, and then travelling through some awesome worlds. So thank you very much for tuning in. I've been Az from Go Again Gaming. This has been Tabletop Hype, and we'll see you for the next video. Peace.